Hi guys and welcome to FM22, my beta save with Liverpool. If you're looking forward to this, drop a like on the video. That would really help me out and all that jazz. It feels like a long time coming, but it's finally here. We're going to be playing as Liverpool for the next few weeks on the beta just to learn the ropes of the game, have a little bit of fun, spend copious amounts of time in the data hub. Too much time, you might say. There's no such thing as too much time in the data hub. In this episode, of course, we're going to have a little look around the club, try to plan out sort of some tactical ideas for the season, maybe set some goals, you know, Goals are important, particularly in football. And in addition to that, I'm also going to tell you how you can win yourself a lovely copy of Football Manager 2022. But before that, I just wanted to quickly sort of clear up the way that my upload schedule generally works, particularly if you are new to my content. So generally speaking, six days a week is when my videos go out, Monday through uh, Friday, and then on Sunday. Saturday is usually the off day uh, for videos. So expect the second episode of this on Sunday. There probably will still be a video tomorrow anyway, highlighting plans and stuff uh, for the entirety of FM22. But don't worry, if you need a little extra fix, I'll be streaming tomorrow morning over on Twitch, which you can find a link in the description too. We're doing our starting beta save with HJK in Finland. Nice and normal. I'm not going to beat around the bush when it comes to the uh, competition for FM22. So quite simply, there is a link in the description to a competition page. There's several different ways you can enter. You can get multiple entries for different things. Follow the instructions there. And uh, yeah, the winner will be announced uh, via email. You'll be notified uh, when the full game is released and you'll get yourself a nice copy of FM22. So, Liverpool. Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool. Premier League champions, but two years ago. Uh, last year, sadly, I say sadly, I mean, third for Liverpool is still a fairly solid season, uh, particularly with the way that it finished. My goodness, what a way to finish that season. Um, getting them into the Champions League, which is what our aim this season is going to be, I suppose. Try to win in Europe. Try to win as many things as we physically can in the time frame that we've got. Now, format-wise, this save is going to be slightly different in the sense that there's really not going to be any off-camera stuff because I'm kind of going to show you a little bit of everything. So, any new stuff that we come across along the way we can enjoy together at uh, both the good and definitely the bad because let's face it this is never going to be smooth sailing by any means but i do think that should be our first goal really try to win as many different or just as many trophies as we can before the full release happens it doesn't help that the club is already in turmoil or with the departure of jürgen klopp and the replacement of him with me I don't know if he was even notified. I can just imagine him strolling into his office, holding his coffee. Normal day for Jürgen at the training ground. Walks in and there's just me sat there with my feet up on the desk being like, Jürgen, Jürgen, mate, take a seat. We need to talk. Just sat there with my giant football slippers. You know, the ones that everybody's football loving dad got for Christmas 13 years ago. Those football slippers up on the desk, kicking his stationery out the way. I hate to break it to you, Jürgen, but the club have decided to go in a different direction. And sadly, my friend, that does not include you. I will have security show you out get you to your car nice and safe. Uh -uh. Leave the coffee and that sausage roll. Leave that right here. I need those. Look, I don't really don't, I really don't like this. It's worth knowing that there's supposed to be a light to my right hand side here. It's broken today. As of today, it has given up the ghost. Now I'm not saying that Mr. Klopp has ta tampered with it on his way out of the club, but I am explicitly saying that. I suppose as our first active manager, we should probably have a little look through the squad. Now, I plan to build myself some nice analysis views, but for now, we can see that the three main stars of Liverpool as probably featured in the thumbnail because I'm unoriginal like that. Mo Salah, Sadio Mane and Virgil van Dijk. Uh, I'm not really a manager that manages at big clubs very often on FM, so I like using the beta as an opportunity to fulfil that childhood desire to manage the very best players in the world. And these are three of them, and I'm really excited to get going with them. Needless to say, we're probably going to need to play a centre-back and then a right and left inside forward. But let's be honest, this club is absolutely stacked. Now, part of me really would like to try out uh, the overlapping centre-backs item, and that would imply us playing a back three. Uh, now, provided we don't end up with the injury crisis at centre-back that Liverpool f featured last year, we might be okay to do that. But I do worry if we do start to experience something like that, we could end up playing Harvey Elliott at centre-back. And like, he's a hot young talent, but he's not going to be able to do that for us. And as a Fulham fan, I'm still slightly bitter about that, but that, that's a different story. But I imagine any Liverpool fans in the comments will probably be eager to see uh, what they've rated good god he's good i'm amazed that his composure is actually only 14 because mo salah to me is an extremely composed player um it's actually nuts how good he is and i'm hoping that we can get the best out of him now that's not to say that we'd actually play him on the right hand side we could play him straight up through the middle but then obviously bobby Firmino might have something to say about that this club has an extremely large amount of top end amazing talent it's like trying to balance it on a seesaw but we've got it all on one side at the moment so we're gonna have to try to sort that out and Sadio Mane isn't exactly much worse in the grand scheme of things the man is an absolute monster of a player 
just get some nice attribute graphs up there as well. Just incredible players. Just looking at Bobby Firmino now, he really is just an excellent deep line forward, isn't he? Uh, and I would like to try to somewhat recreate the sort of style that Liverpool feature in real life. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't want to steal too many ideas off of my predecessor, who will not be named, but he did leave all his notes here. So yes, I will be copying them. It's fine. I'll get like a Theosaurus, change some of the words. Teacher will never know. Something I thought was quite important to look at actually was the transfer sort of situation here. So we have a, we have not exactly got a, a great amount of money this year. Now, of course, that's because Liverpool have already sort of made a lot of their transfers for this summer already. So we have got a little bit of money to play with, but it really is perhaps one or two. Now, depending on what sort of style we want to play, maybe it's a case of just getting a few backups, maybe just trying to sign a couple of youngsters that could come in and maybe be something for the future instead because this squad is still stacked to high heavens as it is right now and maybe our big transfer window will possibly be the start of next season when we'll hopefully get a larger budget i'm seeing i'm looking at you there 86 million pounds i don't know if this is a glitch or it's something else but it appears that costa simicas has more claws than a lion enclosure attached to his contract here oh no that's actually legit olympiacos stand to make out like bandits off of this and we've also got some guaranteed income with marco grujic moving to porto next summer as well i think our transfer strategy for next season is going to heavily depend on how we do this year really most obvious statement of all time there i really can't wait to get stuck into this data hub oh dearie me though it does actually look like we could potentially improve this by getting a new performance analysis analysis yeah, that's the word. One of the things I'm really interested to look at actually is the Dev Center and not the youth candidates so much as the under 18 squad. See if there's any particularly uh, outstanding young talents. Now, again, I'm not overly familiar with Liverpool beyond a cursory level of standard person who watches Premier League football. So I'm not familiar with the likes of Cade Gordon here. Cade Gordon, I'm guessing. Although does look to be a pretty solid player left-footed so it would either play inverted on the left or on the right or standard winger on this left-hand side uh does like a little bit of composure but he's got great crossing and dribbling solidish passing flaring off the ball he's a very solid young talent isn't he also liverpool fans do be sure to tell me about any sort of young prospects that liverpool have that i want to be keeping an eye on basically or if you see anyone in here and you think fm's kind of done them dirty with their rating then again complain and while we're here oakley canonier that is a superb name. Sounds like a sunglasses projectile. Superb. Just actually having a look at the board's current expectations. Now, obviously, this might change when we do a bit of negotiation there, but they have high hopes here. Win the Premier League. Final of the FA Cup. Give a shit about the Carabao Cup. I like that. Be a good opportunity then to play some of the youth players in the Carabao Cup games and really give them a run out. And then semi-final of the Champions League as well. I can see no way in which this is going to go terribly wrong. Sacked in the beta save. I can see it now. Good God. Um, I don't know. Can you have a stack overflow of scouts? They've got 25 of 16. In my head canon now, there's just the recruitment department is 16 guys with desks, offices, great, name on the door, perfect. But then there's just nine other lads sat in the hall on beanbags, desperately trying to balance their laptops. Maybe we could move one of them to technical director or, or probably just hire one. Uh, there's no doctors, but doctors also not allowed. No doctors allowed here. But there's definitely a few ways that we can improve this. Probably not going to sign any more scouts. Could give it a go. I don't know what they'd say. Actually, just kind of goes to show we're the second best for the most part here. And yet that's still how far off we are. And actually really quite poor on the medical side staff if i do one thing right in this save it's to make our recruitment better than manchester united that'll be a win for me now just looking at our sort of fixture lineup for the start of the season it's actually a fairly not easy per se but a relaxed start to the year leicester at home obviously isn't going to be super simple but then we go to southampton away palace at home newly promoted brentford who are obviously doing well in real life but we'll yet to see how they actually do in fm that's not a bad start in our first four matches could definitely get some points on the board early before going into this stretch of games against arsenal random team in the League Cup and then Chelsea and Man United in there too. So I don't know. I think that's a good potential start for us once we can sort something out. So tactically, now I'm not a fan of just immediately going Gagan press. However, given that this is Liverpool, it does feel like the one opportunity where you can kind of go, yeah, that seems like a sensible option. I'm not going to build one from the tactical styles here. We will build one ourselves, of course. And just looking at our squad depth, let's see what he actually recommends. Yeah, I mean, that was standard likely to happen wasn't it really but obviously because Mane is so highly rated I'd probably still play Firmino up the middle as a deep line forward possibly I've never had much success with them but it'd be nice to see what you can do with a player that's actually stunning for that role with Mane and Salah on either side and then you've got sort of quite a lot of options in the midfield with Fabinho and Henderson in there Either one of them can slip here or in the center of midfield. We see this kind of playmaker in there too. Pretty standard stuff at the back too with Robertson and Trent. Presumably wingbacks flying forward, putting amazing crosses in. Van Dijk has to start at center back, presumably alongside either Gomez or Matip, barring injuries, and obviously Allison in goal. The team kind of picks itself at this point. So I think when I come to tactical stuff, it's definitely going to be working along those lines, I'd say. Now, I do like playing batshit tactics from time to time most of the time in fact but sometimes i also like to get my feet under the table and learn the new game a little bit before we start playing a seven at the back asymmetric strikerless formation as for scouting they're recommending me harry kane now 
very good player. Great suggestion and all that. I don't think we're going to quite be able to stretch our budget to him. I'll have a look down the side of the sofa. Maybe we can rustle up an extra 200 million pounds. Although that said, there are actually some quite interesting players in here that I wouldn't mind taking a little look at. Kunde looks spectacularly good. We'll have to take a little look at him. Obviously, he's very expensive. But maybe, a, and then again, Joe Gomez is a young player who's coming through and looks like a solid option. Would I really want to immediately superimpose someone in front of him at that point? Maybe. Honestly, I've been more tempted to go after someone potentially like this Marcus Leonardo fellow. This could mean anything right now, but it would be cool to pick up a couple of young talents, particularly as I don't normally get a chance to sign these types of players on these saves. Or we could just push the boat out inside Erling Haaland. I mean, I'm sorry, Bobby. Also, how... Jesus. That about made me do a spit take without any water in my mouth. 200... That's a lot of money. I just had a look. There's no release clause either. That is just an extremely large amount of money. I've never even seen those fees batted around before on previous FMs. That's insane. Nevertheless, I'm very curious and looking forward to getting stuck in, seeing what kind of players we could maybe pick up this summer, maybe a couple of youngsters, and then focus on some of the big marquee signings for next summer when we've actually got a bit more money. Although we could structure some deals potentially. And rustle up some money ourselves potentially with a few player sales. Not entirely sure who just yet, but there might be a few players that don't quite fit our systems, might have quite high value that we could use to rustle up a little bit of extra cash to improve the squad right now. Though we do have a few players whose contracts are expiring at the end of the season. It does seem that most of the strongest players at the club are tied down, tied down to long-term deals, with the exception of Mr. Hammers Milner here. Would it be silly of me to give him an extension to his contract? The other part of me also goes, it's James Milner. He's going to be playing until he's 87 years old and will still be everyone at the bleep test. It's genuinely staggering to me that Milner maintains such incredible physicality and, and just general physicals at the age that he has and his mentals are off the damn charts. Depending on how much money he wants, I, I think it might be just for out of the goodness of my heart, because, you know, that's how managers hand out contracts to give Mr. Milner an extension, potentially. What sort of injuries are we actually working with here? So, yeah, it does seem that although we actually only have two outstanding injuries right now, Virgil's going to be back very, very soon, which is nice. And Trent, again, it's within a week, so that's not too bad. They should both be back and firing by the start of the season. There is a few recurring injuries in there. Uh, more worrying to me is the Joe Gomez one, to be honest, because you don't really want a recurring injury of damaged cruciate ligaments. That's the injury equivalent of having a recurring car crash. That's not something you really want. But it'd be good if we can keep him fit and just try to maintain fitness levels across the entire squad, because we're going to be fighting on a lot of fronts this season, but I cannot wait to get stuck in. Finally, Finances look pretty damn good for us. We're not past struggling with any of the FFPs, so that's always good to see. Do we have any debts? Yes, yes we do. In fact, we are also in £25 million of transfer debt. Presumably that's all those Simakas clauses. And also the £75 million of net debt on top of that. Like, can't we figure out some place to get nets cheaper than that? Like, I don't know, Sports Direct something, maybe? So, if you're excited, drop a like on the video, that would be tremendous. If you're going to come along for the ride with Liverpool over the next couple of weeks and you're excited to join me, then hey, stick around. If you're new to the channel, of course, do subscribe. That would be lovely as well. And I will see you guys on Sunday uh, when we get through this, well, basically the entire transfer window. We'll probably get our first Premier League game in there as well. Do some friendlies, try and sort ourselves out some uh, tactical styles and figure out who's actually going to play in this team. Maybe do some scouting, find some signings, all that good stuff. So I will join you guys for that very, very soon. Hold your gun, Capybara. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. I can be a fire.